All right, we're here with uh, Hugh Hoagland Watanabe. He's the member of the Japanese national team. He'll be playing basketball at the Olympic Games. Hugh, it's good to see you. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Let's tell the story for those that don't know. We got to know you at Iolani as Hugh Hoagland. Mm -hmm. Hugh Hoagland Watanabe, you have dual citizenship. Uh, tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that for those that don't know uh, the Watanabe part of the last name as well as the, the dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. I mean, Watanabe is my mom's last name. And, you know, when me and my brother were born, she applied for Japanese citizenship. At the time, she had no idea we were going to become athletes. But it, it was more for ease of travel when we go back to Japan. So that's why I have this dual citizenship. And, yeah, just being able to carry my mom's last name for the Japan basketball team is everything. Who would have, who would have thought that carrying that dual citizenship would also have... Uh, that opportunity to play basketball at the Olympic Games. Talk about what that feeling was like when you found out you were going to be an Olympian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was getting treatment with our uh, trainer, Takeo. Super nervous because it was cut day and, you know, waiting for that text to see if I made it or not. And then, you know, our, our vet, Kosuke Takeuchi, who I thought was going to make it in over me, came in and started congratulating everyone and saying like, hey, good luck. And then Taki, our general manager, came in and said, you're in, and immediately started breaking down because it's just been such a long journey um, since I left Iolani to get to this point. Those four years were crazy ride, and it just all caught up. We were talking about it a little bit before uh, we started the interview. Going back to your time in college, you were hurt uh, at UC Davis. You didn't get to play against Hawaii while at UC Davis, and you just talked about, you know, kind of rehabbing from injury. Uh, how difficult was that? And, and did that kind of leave a little bit of doubt for you as far as how far you thought this would take you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that injury alone made me think that I wasn't going to even be on the, you know, the preliminary roster, the first 20. I thought I was out. Um, but they included me and then I thought there was no way I was going to make this team because everyone else had a full pro season, much less a college season. But, you know, being at UC Davis, it's such a great program. Coach Les, Coach Nosek, Coach Vo, Coach John, they are, they're like an incredible staff. Um, they taught me what, you know, m the mental part of the game and how to like keep going even when you have bad days or good days. Hugh Hoagland Watanabe is joining us. He is a member of the Japanese national team playing at the Olympics, of course, a little bit later on this month. I'm Josh Pacheco. Let's talk about uh, getting on that preliminary roster, now getting on the Olympic team. How did you have to qualify for the preliminary roster in that first place? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a group of players that they choose to come into training camp. And, you know, since Kumamoto, when I was 19 years old, and they brought me in for the first time, I uh, made a pretty good first impression and came back for the World Cup, got cut there. So I've always been a part in the round as like a guy trying to make the team, but hasn't never broke through. And I think my time at Davis really helped me mature and, you know, finally got the 12th spot on this roster. <laughs> <laughs> you, you listen, you listen to your voice. And we think back to your days at Iolani and how much you've grown and in such a short period of time too, growing from being at Iolani uh, playing collegiately, now playing professionally. When you first got that opportunity to try out, it, I think was 19 years old for the for the Japanese national team. Not long removed from Iolani, how much of that? How much of an eye opener was that to see the the level of play you were adjusting to and trying out for as compared to you know, your short time in college and, and your time mm -hmm. in high school playing in the ILH, winning state championships, and you know playing in the Iolani Classic. Yeah, I mean, it was just a three to four day camp in Kumamoto and my body broke down on the third day because <laughs> I just wasn't ready to play at that level. I mean, I played well. I was doing well, but, you know, my hip flexors and my knees just couldn't handle it. And, you know, where I'm at at 22, you know, I kept having injuries every time I came here because I'm playing against pros. But this is the first time I've been healthy throughout the entire camp. So physically, mentally, yeah, I've grown a lot since Iolani and even my freshman year in Portland. Talking about your game on the floor, how, how have you grown as far as you know, skill level from when we saw you at Elon and we saw you play that one game here for Portland against Hawaii? Where mm -hmm. do you feel like your game has improved the most? Honestly, it's just the little things. 
I think at Portland really gave me a chance to take the skills that I had from Yolani and just put them into the college game. Um, and then at Davis, they just taught me everything. <laughs> the, the little things about posture, the little things about, you know, snapping your wrist, putting your thumb down. Um, you know, Davis did a lot of fine tuning and it's just a lot more consistent of what I did in high school to what I do now. Maybe a jump shot. Conditioning is a lot better. For the first time, I'm under 10% body fat. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's a bunch of little things that add up to being able to play at the international and pro level. Let's talk about the lead up to the Olympics. You've got a number of tune-up games coming up, and you're mm -hmm. going to be playing with some people that uh, American basketball fans probably know, like a Rui Hachimura, mm -hmm. for example. Talk about some of the guys that you're going to be playing with that some of us know and uh, how you're tuning up, who you're going to be going up against as you tune up for the Olympic Games. Okay. Yeah, well, first for the tune-ups, we have Finland and Belgium coming up in the next couple of days. Um, those are pretty good games. Like we're pretty, we can win those games. And then, you know, we don't know who we're playing in the first uh, of the two games in Saitama before the Olympics, since Serbia got eliminated from Italy. But we'll play France in the second one. And obviously, Rudy Gobert, Evan Fournier, um, Nicholas Batum, like those guys are NBA players, established NBA players. And then, you know, playing with Rui Hachimura and Yuta Watanabe, it's just something different. Like NBA players just have that extra gear that, you know, we don't have uh, as of right now. And just to have them and put the ball in their hands. And, you know, Utah just went off for 26, 7, and 4 last night in 20 minutes against a really good hungry team. So, you know, playing with those kind of players at that level at practice every day and then playing with them on the floor is just, yeah, it's a different experience. Obviously, uh, as we're talking with Hugh Hoagland Watanabe, a member of the Japanese national team, be a part of the uh, basketball festivities at the Olympic Games. Obviously, you're in Japan, and uh, with the games coming up, what is what is the atmosphere like there? We're coming up on a couple of weeks, and 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 I know there's a lot of talk about whether the game should happen, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. What's it like being in pretty much in the center of that? You know, for me personally, I try to cut out the social media. Uh, I kind of leave that up to Anita sometimes, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, we're in a bubble, so we're all kind of like really isolated. Um, so we don't get to interact with the fans a lot, but being at the games and seeing the people there, that are actually really excited to see us. It's a special thing just to be able to play these lead up games and eventually in the Olympics in front of, you know, the Japanese home fans and, you know, in front of everyone, it, it, I can't even describe it. How tough is bubble life? Uh, it's as tough as you make it, I think. If you don't keep busy, you get a little bit of cabin fever, but you just need to find little things, little hobbies to get around it. Take your mind off basketball sometimes or just hit the gym whenever you're feeling a bit anxious or anything like that. What hobbies have you come up with? Um, you know, <laughs> TV shows. I mean, I just went through the whole like pro contract signing. So that was a kind of a busy process. Uh, I, you know, I read David Goggins, the Alchemist, Iki guy. Like I read those books over again because those are the only books that I have right now um, just to keep my mind sharp. And then, you know, TV shows uh, really, really, really love this Japanese drama. I mean, reality TV called Terrace House. I mean, I know there's a lot of controversy around that one, but I, yeah, I'm rewatching those ones too. Lastly, and I know I said I'd ask you this, and I probably should have asked it earlier. At what point in your basketball life did you did you believe you could become a professional basketball player? Mm. I think that first camp at Kumamoto when I was 19, and I could actually get my shot off, and I was you know more athletic and just was able to run the floor. Um, you know, just at 19, I was like. I'm going to get so much better that I could really do this thing in Japan. So, yeah, it opened a lot of doors in that first camp. Hugh, we're proud of you. Uh, it's been a while since we've uh, got to call some of your games in high school. And uh, now, obviously, we'll see you at the Olympic Games coming up in a few weeks. Congratulations. Best of luck. And we'll keep following your journey as you continue along. All right. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for having me again.